Welcome back to the Droids You're Looking For, a Star Wars podcast. And we are still exhilarated after Star Wars Celebration, all the news that broke over the weekend. The Episode Nine trailer, Rise of Skywalker, we saw it all, got all the footage. We have more to talk about. There was more news. Mike alongside Ryan and Chris, sadly, without Sam in this edition of the pod. But guys, how has the Episode Nine trailer marinated for you? We've had some time oh. to stew on it. Think Ooh. a little bit more about it. Put some seasoning in there as well. And <laughs> like, and really, I should be talking about Carl Weathers and The Mandalorian if I'm going to talk about a stew. But <laughs> right. episode nine, how have you felt after some time now to think about it? Oh, man. I tell I, you what. Go for it, Ryan. Well, I, all I was going to say is that the the only feeling I could describe it is that I resigned. I feel like <laughs> I, it was so exciting. The anxiety kicked in. My body gave out. It couldn't handle it anymore. And now... People have theories, and that's exciting. I love talking about it. But people say, how do you feel about this? What if they retcon this? Blah, blah, blah. Oh. And I say, you know what? What will happen will happen. <laughs> do you know? do <laughs> your worst zen. world. Three, two, one, one, two, three. What the heck is bothering me? It's, uh. I'm just letting life happen, baby. <laughs> wow, Ryan. Yeah. Let me uh, take a little bit of that approach. I don't know if I yeah, have it. I, I wish like I could that. feel that. Yeah, way. Mike, you've been screaming on street corners, yes? <laughs> yes, Ryan's- indeed. Ryan's chilling with a Hawaiian shirt on right now, just drinking a <laughs> drink out of a coconut, being like, come on, episode nine, bring it on. That's exactly right. <laughs> I've basically been yelling about anybody on the street that I see. I'm like, Palpatine? Palpatine? <laughs> <laughs> it is a surprise. I, I think, I mean, I think we're kind of settling a little bit more into this. I've seen Mark Hamill. He's doing the uh, the talk show circuit for... Um, uh, for the episode the, nine trailer. For the episode <laughs> nine trailer, they're really right. They really played that well for his uh, History Channel show, and um, he he's been trolling a little bit by like he's mentioning why he shaved his beard off, and then they talk a little bit about Palpatine. So he's 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 having fun with it. I think Palpatine's gonna be in it based on some of uh, the reaction. Like Kathleen Kennedy was in the interview with MTV, and she's kind of seemed to say Palpatine was back. So we'll we'll see the the amount, but I I'm okay with it. I want to know what's going to happen. That laugh is burnt into my brain. I believe Kathleen Kennedy said that Palpatine was always part of the plan, which sounds like something you say when you've had criticisms for the fact that each movie has been sort of different and there hasn't really been (laughs) one guiding light for the three films. But anyway, there is more news from Kathleen Kennedy, more information that came out of Celebration. We're going to talk about The Mandalorian. We're going to talk a little bit more of that breaking news. Of course, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Droids Pod, the Droids Podcast, droidspod at gmail.com. Rate and review us on iTunes. We'd love to hear from you. Help us get a little bit more notice out there in the Star Wars podcasting world. But Ryan, more news from Kathleen Kennedy and from the round celebration. A lot of stuff coming out in the last few days. That's right. So uh, Kathleen Kennedy, I believe, was in an interview with Josh Hurwitz uh, from MTV. Uh, he asked about a Knights of the Old Republic uh, possibility in terms of a, a show or a series or a movie series. And she said that they certainly she implied that that was something that they had in the works. So a lot mm-hmm. of people have thought Ooh. that that might be the Benioff and Weiss series because of Game of Thrones and how, you know, that's they deal with uh, medieval politics. So why not? That's the um, nicest thing you've ever said about Game of Thrones, Ryan. Sure, uh, sure we, got a, we mean, got a short show today. I got to go do through. You, do you mean George Lucas's Game of Thrones? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I mean. But uh, just a reminder: this is a perfect time to go back and watch our Kotor streams on the Droids Pod Ooh, YouTube channel good. and Twitch dot yes. com slash Ryan Droids Pod. And there that's the news. The news <laughs> of the day: Knights of the Old Republic, of course. More news from Celebration. Let's talk about The Mandalorian. I feel like this is the biggest conversation point we have for this edition of the pod. The panel didn't reveal much. If you were streaming it online, you couldn't even see the footage. Obviously, the footage has leaked since then. Mm -hmm. Pedro Pascal was there. Um, What's her name? Who is the lead actress? Gina Carano. Gina Carano. And, of course, Mr. Carl Weathers, who Who I honestly... He looked phenomenal, and he felt, and I don't mean this as any disrespect, he felt a little bit more on his game than Billy Dee Williams did. 
<laughs> well, he is like 15 years younger. Yeah. Is he? I didn't know. I couldn't. I, he I, is. I don't He's know significantly what the younger. I think we looked it up. It was somewhere okay. around like 11 or 12 years. All right. Well, younger. that makes sense. And a when lot you're of sense. getting up there, that's a big 11. Yeah, yeah but you know what? When Rocky's compounded. been banging on the noggin for so <laughs> yeah, right? long, I'm not quite yeah. sure how this works. I mean, he's always he's always going to be Chubbs to me, but I know he's Rocky <laughs> or uh, I Creed do, to many. I do want to say. That I respect people wanting to avoid spoilers, but I the Mandalorian really put into a harsh light that I think that spoiler culture has gotten a little out of hand. <laughs> yeah. Where they had a panel where they were like, we can't show you anything unless you're in the room. But like, you know, for live streamers, they were like, we can't show you anything. And then whenever anyone asked questions, they'd be like, well, we can't tell you anything. And it was like, <laughs> okay. Yeah, what so is like, the point I understand of this panel? if we don't want to find out that like, vader is luke's father going into the movie but wait what? it's gotten so <laughs> it's gotten so out of hand to me that like we can't even mm-hmm. talk about like what the show is yeah you know where they're like who's your character and they're like well i don't know how much i could say but he's certainly a person doing some <laughs> stuff it's right. like come on yeah it's like what are you gonna reveal by saying like can we tell him the color of the mask the, oh, the mask. Also, if, <laughs> if you look back green. to like 1980, where they're like, "The Empire Strikes Back" is coming out. What can you tell us? And they're yeah. like, "Well, we can't. You know, we don't want to spoil any surprises, but it opens on a snow planet called Hoth. We've been on the on the run from the Empire. It's like yeah. the setup of the movie is yeah. not a spoiler. Yeah. No. I wonder if there's just some like kind of financial stake. Like, if you look at the stock prices, they're like, <laughs> and then they go to the snow planet, and the stocks like shoot real high, and then yeah. they go to the um, green planet, and the stocks like drop. <laughs> like, <laughs> I Understand it is like a hype machine too. Yeah. That the more they make it secretive, the more people want to know. But it, well, the the leaked footage was very cool. Look, I, got, I gotta say though, if you're Disney, you've seen what these returns have now happened to Avengers mm-hmm. Endgame. Now that part of the movie has leaked, the yeah. the box office has dropped astronomically. They're not going to oh. make any money on this movie. So why not hide <laughs> yeah. everything Just about the man? Well, we returned yep. our yeah. after those five minutes of oh, yeah. uh, the three the three hour movie uh, leaked. I didn't even watch them, but I returned my tickets because I thought, what's the point? <laughs> Unnecessary. Yeah. If I anyone thought, knows. Yep. But that footage was very cool. I mean, I, I felt I felt much better about the series when I saw mm-hmm. some of those clips. And it yeah. just, I, I mean, I guess I love the, the, the uniform. I love the old world with the Stormtroopers. I love that they brought in the 501st Legion to actually yeah. be the Stormtroopers on the yeah. day. That was Interesting really Interesting that they're Stormtroopers, yes? Considering mm-hmm. the time frame? Oh, yes. Oh, that, is. that is a really good point. I think yeah. that'll be an interesting thing for them to explore because there are like remnants of the Empire and I'm sure they'll be exploring the First Order rising a little bit. So oh, yeah, what yeah, a so great way to tell us more well, I mean, about that. That's very They kind of spoiled cool. it. I wish they didn't spoil it like that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I mean I think they're maybe borrowing a page from Rebels too, right? Or uh, not Rebels, Clone Wars with mm-hmm. you have this kind of like retired clone army and some of them were just kind of like, "Well, what do I do now?" Sure. Yeah. Well, we saw a little bit of that in the video game in Battlefront 2 in the solo mm-hmm. story there, the single player yeah. mode, where it was what happens next to Inferno Squad, yeah. but that, yep. that didn't tell the story of the rest of, well, of the Stormtroopers. Just kind of a, another way of humanizing those Stormtroopers, which are usually used as props, and, and we kind of saw a good version of that with, uh, with Finn, who's, who's uh, yeah. a Stormtrooper. I always forget that. How do we feel about Mr. Favreau and uh, good old Favs, his introduction, him and Dave Fellini, kind of like they're back and forth. Mm-hmm. Uh, Favreau seemed to be Favreau. I don't think he really did anything to change my thoughts on his involvement in this. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Well, it, Filoni was wearing a cowboy hat, so that was a choice. <laughs> um, he always wears the cowboy that's his, hat. Yeah, that's his trademark. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Chris, we had some thoughts yeah. while we were watching. I, think, I, I, feel, like, I feel like Filoni maybe in a past era of Lucasfilm was was geared up to be the to take the helm to under the the producer of Kathleen Kennedy he would be basically leading the creative director of of Lucasfilm and I think after the acquisition I feel like those plans shifted and all of a sudden uh people like Favreau and 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 Abrams and Johnson and uh, Benioff Weiss everyone started to take those reins a little bit from him so he almost seemed a little bit like he seemed a little exhausted, if I could be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Would you agree? He kind of seemed like yeah, there was yeah, there was like a uh, I don't I've never seen an interview with him before, but there was a defeated quality about him. Oh boy, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't really feel that way. To you be didn't honest. get that. Well, okay. I guess I've seen talking... other interviews with him, but yeah. 
Favreau kept there was a specific moment where he kind of reined it back at the end but Favreau was talking about like the great collaboration with Filoni and he was talking about it a little bit like he like took him under his wing like Favreau took Filoni oh, under his wing like he right. was like yeah. you know we I was telling him what I wanted to do and he was on set and like he was like learning the process and it's like if I was Filoni, I'd be like, dude, I was here before you and I'll <laughs> yeah. be here after you. Like, you know, like <laughs> right. it's just, And yeah. I'm a much more talented story, yeah. you know, creator, world builder, everything. Well, it's like that. like Chris said, it's like he was next in line. Like like Favreau's talking about it, like George was telling me how proud he is of Dave. And it's like you and George are not contemporaries, <laughs> right. Favreau. Yeah. Like Filoni's been working with George for over a decade. Yeah. And like also, you grew up on George Lucas's movies, so it's not like you and George get to speak condescendingly about Dave Filoni. You know, I it's like that dude's like didn't... proven his salt in the in the Star Wars universe, like many times over. Yeah, I was the same, definitely many times over. I didn't quite feel that way. Um, I understand where you're coming from. I, I, I'm trying <laughs> maybe to it's maybe my Favreau. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, be. I might have just been. I, I also into feel it a lot. like there was maybe my gut reaction to Episode Nine was you know a little bit concern, and here I was trying to be like, all right, let's just have some optimism. Let's think this is gonna yeah, go right. <laughs> that's I good. I want that's this good. to be good, and so I, yep. I just kind of leaned into that side of it. I did appreciate some of the behind the scenes that they showed, mm -hmm. the way they were building the models of the ship and trying mm -hmm. to mirror the way they made things originally and it sounded like so many people who are have been involved in star wars for so long were so excited to be like oh yeah sure i'll go and build that for you john knoll is like back in his garage making mm -hmm. models and you know mm -hmm. using yeah. any tools he can to make things that's cool that was it, very fun it's a very 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 fun cool waste of time <laughs> I, Wait, you mean I really, the panel? I did or like that no, naked? not the panel. The model building is great, and I love it. Oh. It's just so funny that they like bring that up. It's like make the show good. You know uh, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, sure. I think, but it's I understand it shows the care being put in. It's like it, yeah. it is cool, and seeing that they like made the thrusters out of like mm -hmm. metal to operate was like cool. Yeah. And I do think it's great that even Favreau himself is like, yeah, we have this detail. No one's probably ever gonna know, but we had fun <laughs> doing it. Like I think yeah. those are th that's fun. I mean that's. That's kind of the same vibe you got on like Rogue One, where it was just kind of like, all right, some super fans now got a hold of the the franchise. Like, yeah, and they're, that they're... spirit comes through, even yep. if you don't know that it's like a model. There is yep. something to like they wanted to play with the toys, exactly. Yep. And I think that's kind of where these the the side stories and the TV series, I hope, kind of take place in that in that sense of like, okay, the 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 movies are what inspire you to play with the toys, literally and metaphorically. Um, <laughs> literally when you're younger or adults like us, but then metaphorically for these directors to be like, okay, I have all these Star Wars things. Like, what's something they do in Star Wars? They make models. Let's do that. Like, <laughs> I think I think that's pretty cool to see the sandbox. And I, I'm very excited with episodic television to see the different directors and, like, the kind of the, the puzzles they're going to present and try to solve in their unique ways. Um, do we know how many episodes is in the first series? I believe it's eight. Okay. Maybe six or eight. I think it was eight. That's a cool. great number. And it I'm will very be... excited. Go, oh, sorry. sorry. Go. I would say it oh, will was... be spread out um, week to week. It is not going to be oh, Netflix. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. No, it's probably, it's That's probably a good move. I'm very excited <laughs> about the presence of Werner Herzog. Oh, very much so. Oh, the yeah. galaxy is writhing in pain. Yeah. <laughs> Everywhere yeah. the Banthas cry. What, a, <laughs> what an interesting uh, choice. I like... Werner Herzog has proven time and time again that he is not the serious person that we all think he is. That he's like willing to have some fun. Mm -hmm. He was in Jack Reacher. He's awesome in it. He, he was, was in so, an episode of Parks and Rec. I would say he, he was, was so really good in, it. in that Parks and Rec. And he's wearing a <laughs> Wisconsin Badgers sweatshirt while talking he, about moving to Disneyland because I want to be closer <laughs> to Disney. <laughs> he he knows who he is. And I love that about him. <laughs> I will um, say I was trying to take the optimistic point of view, as I just said. Yeah. When Gina Carano said, I guess I'm an actor now, that was my greatest fear realized. Because, <laughs> come on, why hire someone who doesn't even consider themselves an actor? <laughs> I mean, I know, you know she was fine in the movie that Soderbergh did, but I don't know. I mean, you know, she wasn't really. She, honestly, that's a cool movie. She wasn't good in it. That's why I, think, I, I turned it off. She was surrounded I watched by first, a bunch of good actors. I watched I the first the, fifteen minutes and I couldn't keep watching because of her. If yeah. there's a, if there's a, a, a kind of a, a maybe some kind of takeaway through this, it's it's it, maybe it's something that like she wants to do, and I think it's great that like I none of us I think are against this thought, but like I think it's 
good that Star Wars is now like opening its doors to other actors and like other types of characters, perhaps. And like, I don't know, maybe we don't like her, but maybe it's something she wants to do. That's true. And the character design was great. So it's like, I'm sure. And like, who knows what the character will be? Maybe it's like right down her alley in terms of her abilities. Yeah, yeah so. I mean, they're going to play into it, I'm sure. And and like we talked about before, she could be very much like an Attack of the Clones character uh, who was the bounty hunter who came to get Padme. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so she's just kind of yeah. silent. You know, she's just in the background. She's there Tell as an enforcer. Tell us now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, Pedro Pascal felt like he was – his enthusiasm really shone through, and that was, and that yeah. was nice to see. I, I – I appreciated oh, yeah. that it didn't seem like he was putting on a show. He just seemed pretty excited. Yeah, he's stoked. It's cool. It was cool. Yeah. He was definitely the most animated of the group. I mean, I think it's cool to see a new cast to a Star Wars thing when they're like still uh, like all the awe and wonder. I feel like the panel for uh, episode nine, they were like a little more like, we've done this before. And now, Also, like, everyone just looked like terrified in that yeah. way that they're like, I can't say anything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, am I allowed to say this? That's why I get excited. And like, this will kind of, this is a little more about the episode one panel, uh, which we're going to get into. But that's why it's kind of more exciting when like the older people come out because like they don't really have a concept of the spoiler thing and they're like i'll just say stuff mm-hmm. <laughs> like yeah. ian mcdarmid like was very like um like cagey about things and that was very endearing but like billy d williams you're like he might say he a might huge say, spoiler oh yeah when lando dies at anthony the daniels will say anything to get a reaction from a crowd <laughs> i mean there's someone who's not worried about saying too much and and it doesn't matter that he's not talking about the movies in his opinion he can just talk about anything <laughs> related to himself i do want to say um just because i know that we're we got hard outs tonight um <laughs> i thought the episode one panel that was my by far my favorite panel of celebration i thought it was beautiful yeah i, I agree i mean, we, didn't get a chance to watch all of it so i will take your word for it until i catch up on it <laughs> well it was yeah. cool because warwick davis hosted it and he was great he was the best host of the weekend definitely and well i did love ha- colbert but yeah <laughs> yeah, he was good too. But um they also the first half of it was just like crafts people who worked on the movie, not like craft services, but like <laughs> ILM people who have been there for years and years and like they talked about basically inventing technologies to be in it and it was really fascinating and amazing to hear them. Like the enthusiasm and love that they talk about it was was really infectious. Yeah, it was it actually it kind of helped separate the like whatever negative vibes that episode one carries amongst many fans Mm -hmm. like i think when you like personalize it and show like hey these people like worked super hard on this movie and it was also like a momentous like that 16 years of no star wars had gone by and then to have this opportunity to bring it back like all of these people gave it ten thousand percent yeah and and also that they were like they were inventing things as yeah. they were going. Like, that's amazing yeah. to see. Also, that they're all still at ILM. Right. You know, it because, was, yeah. I mean, ILM is the best. In in that field, it is the best there is. So once people get there, they generally stay. Because they're like, mm-hmm. where where else would I go? This is right. exactly what I want to do. Well, it was, yeah, it was definitely like, yeah, they hadn't solved all the technical challenges. So they were like, okay, well, we have a whole new set of problems, just like we did 16 years ago. What do we do? Well, and- Ahmed Best said, um, and... To me, the moment of celebration, aside from the trailer coming out, was him coming out because, you know, he's been open about struggles with depression after all the hate came out after the prequels. Mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. and he was received with such warmth. And there was so it was so, you know, as a prequel guy, seeing that room and how warm people were about the prequels was amazing. Um, but he also mentioned how he's like, if you see production stills, he's like in a, a suit of sorts oh, on yeah. set. And he said, like, they had us do that in case the CGI, like, didn't work. <laughs> like, he was just, like, I was in as much of the suit as I could be in case that they couldn't get the whole thing to work. Wow. Just, and, like, that's fascinating. Like, they were just doing it and they didn't know yet. It's such a wild, like, concept. You forget how, like, truly groundbreaking that movie was. And, like, I'm sure the the tactics and the, and the, the technology, I mean, has probably influenced everything that's come after it. And it was great to see him have that kind of moment of redemption where yes. it was just like the fans were chanting his name. Like 
a time has passed. He's not the worst. He's not the enemy. It's like we're all on the same team here. Like, yeah. and I mean, he never was the enemy, and Chris, and, and like you're right about that. It just it, one of those things where I feel like even if you don't love the character now, even if he's still not your favorite, you still give that man a huge round of applause for what he's had to deal with from a part portion of the fan base that never lived in a reality that had any common decency. And so I think he deserved every minute of applause and name chanting. And I, I may not still love his character, but I'm thrilled that the guy can be, you know, himself and not have to have this weight on him anymore. Yeah. I also have to say that I, I went back and watched episode one in its entirety for the first time in years. Mm-hmm. Um, you mean you mean from the first time since we did the rewatch a year ago? Is that what you mean? <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> oh no peek behind the curtain okay. there. <laughs> uh, i feel like i was caught by the teacher that i didn't read the book um, i went back and watched it liked it a lot more than i thought i did um because as you know i put it last in my ranking um mm-hmm. but also i i've been a prequel apologist i haven't always been a jar jar apologist but i will say i I was legitimate. I found legitimate affection for Jar Jar watching it this time. I was laughing. I was actually laughing at like bits he was doing. I think it's a really impressive piece of character work. On it. like I'm saying that I th- truly. I think with age, much like the aforementioned meal you were describing, <laughs> Mike. I think that this this episode one has actually aged very well, and I think in the scope of things that we see now, it's almost tamed. Com- like compared to the rest of like movies that we see now like it is actually has pacing it actually has like there's there's the character development there's 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 some plot sure the dialogue is not up to snuff but just visually it's uh, it's like a peek into a different world so i mean i think this movie is actually aged very well where whereas that was not the expectation for me well chris you were saying how like if it if it came out now like obviously with updated effects or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like obviously yeah. people would comment on the dialogue, but people I feel like because you know it's a dark time in the world. It's I feel like people would be like, "This is like the break we needed." Yeah, exactly. Yeah. People people would say like, "Oh, that was refreshing. It didn't take itself too seriously. <laughs> it's pretty lighthearted." No, Star Wars can't have any sense of humor. Please, <laughs> exactly. please stop it. No, thank you. I know we are wrapping up this podcast. It's a short edition of the show. We've had a lot that we've done over the past few weeks. Uh, go back, listen to our Marvel episodes where we talk about the Marvel Cinematic Universe before Endgame and how it ties into what Star Wars and Disney's trying to do with Star Wars. And then, of course, listen to our Episode 9 Rise of Skywalker trailer reaction mm-hmm. from last week. That's um, one of my favorite episodes oh, we've yeah. ever done. It was so good. It was, it was great. always it was a pleasure so to do that in person as well. I think a pod, uh, you know, we want to do these in person as often as we can. But, On a loosey goosey Friday night, <laughs> it's always loosey goosey. Uh, <laughs> around the horn, real quickly though, what other lasting moments stood out to you from Celebration? And we can just go through them very briefly before we wrap up. <laughs> I mean, I feel like uh, the the panel was great. I think um, seeing a lot of the new uh, um, merch got me very excited. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to say the Galaxy's Edge merch that they showed a different bit of Galaxy's Edge merch every day of celebration. I honestly don't know how I will not spend minimum of twenty five hundred, <laughs> three grand. I'm I'm going to go broke in the Galaxy's Edge merch stands, and I want <laughs> to hitchhike there, home. Yes, <laughs> there there has to be, and I would really implore Disney to do this: a one of everything option, please, please. <laughs> oh my yeah, gosh! Yeah, the it was lightsaber so great. hilts, the legacy lightsaber hilts are amazing. The legacies are incredible. The new ones are incredible. The the costumes. Yeah. I want a Jedi costume. I want the a Rebel pilot. I the in world branding of this that none of it says Star Wars on it is the greatest thing that it's like they took it out of my brain. I love them so much. Thank you. Very cool. Uh, my favorite moment of the panel was uh, Anthony Daniels' reveal of his alternate <laughs> book title. Um, I thought that was really thrilling, especially when we were waiting for a trailer to come out. I could tell. I joke. I, I mentioned it already, but I think the the reaction to Ahmed Best coming out was my favorite moment. There's, I thought it was beautiful. 
a lot more great stuff to find. Check out the StarWars.com or for the images, but there's also like an eight-minute recap video from Star Wars on social media. Check that out. That is going to do it for this edition of the Droids You're Looking For, a Star Wars podcast. Join us again next week. We're going to break down even more, talk more about some of the news from Celebration, Jedi Fallen Order. We'll get into that as well. That will do it for Chris and Ryan. I am Mike saying so long. This has been the Droids You're Looking For, a Star Wars podcast. Chris, Ryan, and Mike. Good to see you. Hey guys, this is Sam from the Droids Pod. Uh, I'm just recording a a special uh, dispatch from the uh, from the Conja Club where I'm hanging out. Uh, I'm celebrating. uh, I'm celebrating tonight during our regular recording time with uh, four years with uh, with Rachel, recent uh, recent host, co-host, guest. What was her role? I don't know. Nobody knows. Uh, I think we were guesting on her show. For the uh, the Marvel uh, the Marvel recaps, but um, so Rachel and I were celebrating four years together tonight. Um, but I did just want to drop in a line and say that uh, that in addition to our, uh, I've really enjoyed all the uh, you know all our all our talk uh, about the the trailer over the weekend. I had a blast um, watching Celebration with you guys over the live stream uh, over the course of the weekend. I really 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 enjoyed the. Um, the Phantom Menace 20 year panel. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if you guys got into that or if it's something we'll talk about in the future, but I just thought the panel was great. I love that movie. It's my favorite prequel. So I had a blast. Um, I thought Warwick Davis did an excellent job, uh, hosting that panel. Um, also I don't think this is necessarily, uh, well it is original cause I arrived at it myself, but I don't think it's necessarily a new thing, but I did have another thought about in terms of the rise of Skywalker and what it could mean in in relation to uh you know to Leia who's obviously a a Skywalker in her own right was that you know it is it as simple as you know Leia Organa General Organa you know Leia Skywalker you know sort of assuming the family name and rising to uh you know to a seat of power in a in a new new republic at the end um you know, I don't know if I like that theory better than better than the theory we talked about on the previous pod about, um, you know, about Skywalkers being sort of the next iteration of the Jedi. That's still sort of my favorite. But um, I think either of those things could work. I think given what we've heard in the past about uh, Kathleen Kennedy talking about how Episode Nine really was to be Carrie's movie, really was to be Carrie Fisher's film, it would kind of make sense that 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 title could be a reference to her rise. Um both sort of to, to, to power and, and her rise from from her family's, uh, you know, sort of resurrecting her family name and, and bringing honor to it once again. So I think, you know, maybe maybe that's what, what how this centers on Carrie's uh, role in the franchise, and maybe that's why J.J. Abrams at the press conferences was saying, you know, once you see the movie, you'll, you'll, you'll understand what we mean. It's very obvious. Um, so that's just a new theory from me. Again, I'm sure it's out there on the Internet. Um, but I would love to hear what what people are thinking out there about the title. Um, and then the other thing was that I did manage to find. Uh, I think we've all seen it, but you know, a, le- a leaked uh, the leaked video of the the Mandalorian like trailer, uh, which is about six minutes. Um, it's not just that sizzle reel. It's not just the behind the scenes stuff, but it's actually like a full on sort of trailer for the season of the show. Um, it gives you a little bit of some some plot details, a little bit of how this works, the the bounty hunting element, and man, I am so so excited for this show. It looks like a very fun world to live in. Werner Herzog looks amazing. Carl Weathers looks amazing. I think um, I think the Mandalorian himself, just like visually, I mean, it's so smart for star wars to start with a character that's just like so visually iconic um obviously the mandalorian is sort of a version of boba fett um i think the only the only critique and hesitation i have is that it feels like this is kind of a boba fett show but obviously it's taking place at a timeline where it's probably not boba fett I wonder if they're going to reveal at the end, like it is, he survived. This is Boba Fett or something. But, um, it's a little odd that there's another quiet, morally ambiguous bounty hunter who wears Mandalorian armor, you know, in the galaxy, uh, on a desert planet that looks a lot like Tatooine. I mean, it seems like 
they had to really, who also works, you know, alongside IG-88, um, which by the way, that was one of the best moments of this teaser. Um, the IG-88 sort of action sequence. Um, I love the way they sort of designed his movement and his, in terms of like his, his skill set. He's, he's truly a robot and that's his advantage. Um, but anyway, there's a lot in this trailer. I don't know if you guys broke it down or if it's something we'll do in the future. I'm running long for a, uh, for a quick dispatch. Again, this was meant to be much shorter. Um, but I just wanted to, to, you know, give a shout out to Tasu Leach. Good to see you. And, uh, and I'll see all of you, uh, on the flip side sometime next week. Uh, Hope everybody had a had a good week, and hope we've uh, had some had some feedback. Dying to hear what uh, what everybody's thinking about the uh, the trailers, the teasers, all the stuff that came out of Celebration this weekend, and, and we're on it now. We're on the road, the road to uh, to Episode Nine, to Disney Plus, to all of it, to Galaxy's Edge. Um, so talk to you guys soon. Bye. <laughs> You boys want to go to the Galaxy's Edge? Chris totally left, didn't he?